Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be the first video of 2024. I'm playing a little bit of catch up with my pad reviews. This is the GameSense Sonar, and right now it's on sale for $54. So if you've been looking for a reason to enter the glass pad market or give glass a try, I think the price tag is a pretty solid reason because you're getting a 500 by 400 chunk of glass. There are just a few things that I don't like about the pad, but comparing glass pads to glass pads to glass pads, they all differ so inconsequentially that it's kind of hard to recommend one over the other. This pad, the main difference is, is one, the size again, and it doesn't sit all the way flat because of the rubber feet below, kind of like the sky pad. Um, I think the height is almost up to five millimeters. So if you're an arm aimer, you're going to have to keep in mind if you are moving vertically, you might feel that hump as you are moving your arm up and down. The other thing that you'll have to be aware of is the glide feels um, a little bit smoother. It's almost like you're moving your mouse through a substance on the pad because it almost feels like it is slowing you down and catching the mouse more than other glass pads. So it's interesting because it is a glass pad that's supposedly not coated that has a difference um, that you can really feel compared to something like the Super Glide and the Sky Pad. So if you're looking for a glass pad that has a little bit more control, this is definitely one that comes to mind. The other thing that I do have to point out is because of the feet on the bottom of the pad, you'll see that the bottom of the pad does have these six rubber feet. And because of those uh, rubber feet, when you are moving your mouse side to side with the GameSense sonar, you'll have a little bit of side to side wobble because those feet are not perfectly resting on my desk. So is it something that bothered me in game? No, and it's something that you really have to intentionally do. The other thing I noticed about the GameSense sonar is that it does kind of get a lot of moisture on the pad. I was just outside for a run, came in, showered up and I am uh, just touching the pad and you can really see that the moisture does get onto the surface and then kind of gets away on its own. Um, but if you're in a very humid room, this is a pad that can accumulate quite a bit of moisture. So that's another thing that I would point out. Um, but for $54, I think it compares competitively speaking, gameplay speaking to other pads. Taking this into the finals, I had absolutely no issue with my tracking, my flicks. I think it is a pad that feels good. And again, on Glide with IEMs in or headphones in, it has a feeling on Glide like the Razer Atlas, which is a very smooth as, a, as opposed to almost like a chalky or harder experience. It just has this smooth glide to it and a smooth glide to the skates. One of the things with this pad is I also feel that it's a little less audible than some other pads. So I have Tiger Ice V2 dots, and you guys can hear a little bit of an audible noise, but it's bearable if you're perusing windows, going to YouTube, etc. Comparatively speaking, larger skates do have a bit more of a noise to them on the G-Pro Superlight. And then getting to just the default G Pro Super Light skates, a little bit more of an audible feedback from the skates themselves. So far, the surface has held up very well for me. Throwing this thing around, swapping pads, um, I haven't had any issues with the durability of the glass itself. One thing I will point out is that the edges could be a little bit more rounded, but they're rounded enough to not feel pointy and scratchy. Um, so keep that in mind. And then the only other thing that I noticed on the pad is that there are a few imperfections on this particular pad that I have where there are these little translucent holes on the black surface in different locations. I think obviously that's just a, a BQ flaw from the factory itself. I don't know if any other pads have that issue, but what I can say is it doesn't affect my tracking at all. I haven't lost uh, sensor tracking because of those little tiny dots. So for me, it's just not an issue. So that's really all I have. I mean, glass pads are like comparing hairs on somebody's head. 
one might be a little bit longer, one might be a little bit shorter, one might be a little bit lighter, one might be a little bit darker. Um, I mean, it's such a nitpicky thing comparing glass to glass at this point. If you're looking to try glass for the first time, the pad right now is 54 bucks, and it might be a good pickup if you have always wanted to try a glass type surface. For me, for glass, <clears throat> just personally speaking, because glass pads are so similar, I just find myself gravitating towards the ones that have cooler designs on the surfaces. Of course, this being all black, I don't really gravitate towards it. But again, for a budget entry mouse pad, it's got the right size and it does feel quite nice on Glide. I'm not sure if it's coated or not. They say it's not, but it does feel very similar to the Razer Atlas. If anybody's tried that, you'll know kind of how the speed of this might feel comparatively to other glass pads. But guys, that is going to be it. Again, I'm trying to get caught up on the pad reviews. We just got sent and hit with a lot of things at the same time. I've got the IEMs and the new headphones coming as well with the Hype 4s and the other things I recently displayed and the Infinity mice pad. So we will get caught up and some reviews crack in here in no time. So I wish you guys the best. I hope everybody had a happy New Year's and hopefully everybody has the best year in 2024. I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.